proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another performance of Proudly We Hail, a program presented by your War Department. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we give you Mr. Randolph Scott as the star of our show, Tedesca Highway, written by Richard Hall with music by Eddie Scrivanik. <laughs> For Chief Engineer Bill McElvain, building a mountain road in Peru had its headaches. Number one headache, the fact that the replacement engineer requested weeks ago from the home office the J.J. Dong Construction Company hadn't arrived. McElvain is fuming about this problem the morning our story begins. Jerry. Where the devil are you, Jerry? Coming, Mac. Now, what are you doing out there? Taking a siesta? Where's the mail? Yeah, it's right here. The runner just got up from Tedesco with it. Oh, he did, huh? We put in 10 miles of the best highway ever built in this country from that lousy town down there, and that runner is always late with the mail. Light a fire under him, would you, Jerry? Yes, Mac. All right. Now, what have we got? Well, not much important except this telegram. Well, that's plenty important. Let me have it. Maybe they're sending me that engineer I've been desperate for this month after all. McElvain, Tedesco Road Project. Last week's progress report, very unsatisfactory. Please explain, signed J.J. Doan. Jerry, this is it. Oh, take it easy, Mac. Take, take it easy, it. nothing. I break my back, I sweat my heart out, I beg for an engineer, and what do I get? Last week's progress, unsatisfactory. Mac, there's something I... Jerry, I want you to do this. Yes, Mac. Save every one of those telegrams. Yes, Mac. When we get through here, I'm going back to the States. I'm going to say I never had the pleasure of meeting you, Mr. J.J. Doan... But right now, I'm going to have the pleasure of taking all those telegrams you sent me and cramming them right down your throat. Uh, you all through, Mac? No, shoot him an answer, blister him, tell him the facts of life down here, and ask him where in the devil that engineer is, he promised me. Yes, Mac. You all through now? Yeah. Good, then I guess I can tell you. The new engineer arrived this morning. What? Why doesn't somebody tell me these things around here? Who is he? Stephen Grant's his name. Brother, how we need him? What's his experience? Who's he worked for? Well, nobody. He's, uh, he's fresh out of college. Fresh out of college? I knew it was too good to be true. I ask for an experienced engineer, and they send me a pipsqueak fresh out of school. All right, Jerry, get him down here. We'll use him somewhere. Grant, you're late. I sent for you an hour ago. Well, I was shaving, Mr. McElvain. We well, don't shave around here, Grant. We're too busy. Good. So you were just out of college, huh? That's right. And now you're going to be a great big construction engineer. <laughs> Not going to be, Mr. McElvain. I, I like to feel that I already am. I see. Well, uh, tell me, where do you think you'd fit in best? Oh, that's up to you, Mr. McElvain. You think so? Sure thing. Just something with a little responsibility, that's all. I like to think I can handle just about anything you want to throw my way. Oh, you do? All right, Grant. I'm going to start you off with a nice big shovel and put you with a grading crew. When you get a few calluses on your hands, I'll give you a job with a little more responsibility. You're the boss, Mr. McElvain. That's right, and don't you forget it. Well, Jerry, we're coming along. Lucky thing, I got hold of that engineer down in Lima. If we had to use the product of Sunners from the States, we'd be here ten years. Oh, lay off the kid, Mac. He's doing fine. Oh, here he comes. Morning, Mr. McElvain. Jerry. Say, I've been wanting to talk to you, Mr. McElvain. What you spoke about the day I got in. That'll come in time, Grant. Say, why aren't you wearing boots? What? You heard me, boots. Didn't anybody tell you about the snakes along this road? Well, yes, but... What do I have to do? Come over and dress you in the morning? You better get some boots on. I'll see you later, boss. Why don't you give the kid a break, Mac? Save it, Jerry. Four years of college, and they think they're ready to build a boulder dam. Why, why, he isn't even dry behind the ears. Say, Mr. McElvain, can I have a minute? What is it, Grant? Well, I've been down on that grading crew for a month now. So I'm... what? I worked as a grader for five years and no complaints. Well, I'm not complaining, Mr. McElvain. It's, uh, it's just that 
I signed on with this company as an engineer, sir. Well, what are you kicking about? You're getting paid. You've just got to learn the practical side. Well, I've had just about enough of the practical side. Now, listen, Junior. As long as you're working for this company, you're working for me. And you'll do what I tell you to do. McIlvain, there's a limit to what a fellow will stand. Is there, fella? Why, you... Look out, kid. Jerry. Jerry. Huh? What is it, Matt? Oh. oh. Get a bucket of cold water and douse him. When he comes to, he may want to get paid off. If he doesn't, keep him on the grading crew until he learns some manners. That's what I like about you, Mac. You're so considerate. In just a moment, we return to our play starring Randolph Scott. But first, a message from your War Department. If on a quiz program the question were asked, what is the greatest team of technicians and scientists in the history of the world? The answer would be very simple. The U.S. Army. Yes, the Army is a group of trained and educated men continually working towards scientific achievement, engaged in research and development heretofore unheard of. Every member of the Army is instructed in a particular trade or skill, contributing to the overall pool of knowledge and accomplishment. The recent discoveries by the Army in the fields of atomic energy, supersonic flight, push-button control of airplanes, and new types of improved communication are but the vanguard of a new era of scientific living and improvement. But what are the personal inducements for a man to associate himself with such an organization? A private just starting in the Army has a pay of $75 in addition to free lodging, food, clothing, and medical care. In addition, there are family allowances, extra pay for overseas service, flight or glider pay, longevity, and unmatched retirement benefits. See your local Army recruiting station today about a career in the regular Army. Act two of Tedesca Highway, starring Randolph Scott as Bill McIlvain. Trouble hit the Tedesca Road project to a degree which made J.J. Doan's telegrams pale by comparison. First a cloudburst, which stalled the heavy equipment. Then a giant slide, isolating the construction camp from the town of Tedesca. Bill McIlvain was not in his best mood as he discussed the situation with Jerry, his man Friday. Well, it looks like we're bogged down, but good. That's right. Care to play a little honeymoon bridge? No, I wouldn't care to play a little honeymoon bridge. What happened to the kid? Oh, Grant? Well, so far as I know, he's sticking. I put him back with the graders. Well, who knows? Maybe it'll work out after all. Uh, what about that load of TNT from Tedesca? Oh, it didn't get through, and we need it. All we've got is a few cases of that crystallized stuff. Is that still around? Why in the devil hasn't something been done about that? Well, maybe because it's liable to go off if you breathe on well, it. We've got to get rid of it. Well, at least we've had a full dose. Nothing else could possibly happen. Mm, you think so? What's up? Look out the window. They're carrying somebody in. Hmm. Looks like somebody's been hurt. Okay. Here we go, boys. Hey, it's the kid. All right, man. What's Lay him on the table. Okay. we got to work fast. Rip the pants leg off. Uh, now get the knife over there, Jerry. Uh, and the medical kit. Okay. Here you are, Mac. First, a tourniquet. Above and below. The crazy kid. I told him about the snakes. I told him to wear boots. The knife, Jerry. Ah, uh, right here. There. That ought to open it. Well, that's all we can do here. Here? Well, we're not going anywhere. We're going to town. We've got to get into the hospital in Tedesca. Oh, we'll never get through to Tedesca, Mac. There's a landslide. Or didn't you know? I'm going to blast a hole right through it. Get me the keys to that old truck. What are you going to do, Mac? Put Grant in the car. Give me ten minutes start and then follow me. I'm going to get rid of that crystallized TNT. Mac, you're crazy. You'll never make it. Now hit the bullseye, babe, and don't miss.
Jerry, the gate's open. Yeah, Mac. Let's get Junior to the hospital in Tedesca. <laughs> Mac, Grant's doing fine. He'll be back on the job in a few days. He ought to be. He's been sitting in that hospital for two weeks. I'd have been out of there in a day. Yeah, but you're not human, Mac. Hmm. Oh, yes, a runner just brought up a wire from Tedesca. Yeah. I'm holding him here in case you want to answer it. Let me have it. Uh, Michael Vane, Tedesca Bridge. Jump in Jupiter, Jerry. Get a load of this. Huh? I just received word of what you've done for Stephen Grant. Stephen insisted on taking his first job entirely on his own, without any push from me. However, to realize Mrs. Doan's gratefulness and mine, I think you should know that Stephen is our nephew, whom we have raised as a son. Gratefully yours, J.J. Doan. Say, that's really something. How do you like that kid? Why, he didn't even tell me. Let me look at that wire. Wow. Mac, from now on, you'll be able to write your own ticket any way you want it with the J.J. Doan Company. Mm. You want to answer this wire? Yeah. Send this to the old man. Save the hearts and flowers. What I did for Stephen Grant, I'd do for the lowest day laborer in the section gang. Let's see. Oh, yes, you might add this. Leave Grant with me a couple of years. I might make an engineer out of him. <laughs> This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our Proudly We Hail story starring Randolph Scott. Before leaving you, Don Forbes has an important message for all of us. The young high school graduate today has many professions from which to choose. One of the best of them is the Army. Our Army needs ambitious, intelligent men willing to learn the latest scientific developments and to master a trade or technical skill. Trained men are needed to carry on its continuous scientific development necessary in this age of atomic power, supersonics, television, and radar. Army technicians are discovering and working on developments that scientists 25 years ago never dreamed possible today. The record of the Army's advancement in the fields of science is a long and commendable one, and each day is being materially added to. Such things as a parachute which enables a flyer to bail out at supersonic speeds, Night sight viewers and planes which can fly faster than the speed of sound represent only the beginning of amazing new scientific developments to be accomplished by the Army. As a member of such a progress-minded team, the American soldier is a man specifically educated in any one of innumerable branches of knowledge such as electronics, atomics, medicine, industry, and aviation, to mention but a few. He is a technician. But besides the obvious and invaluable advantages of emerging a skilled man in his field, what are the personal benefits of a career in the new army? Stated simply, a soldier is being paid for learning. A private receives $75 in addition to free food, lodging, clothing, and medical care. Not bad for a man just starting out in his profession, is it? After only 20 years of service, a soldier in the new regular army can retire on a half pay, or up to 30 years, on a monthly retirement income of $185.63 for a first or master sergeant. In an ordinary insurance retirement plan, it would cost approximately $1,000 a year to be assured of an income such as this after 30 years, but in the Army it costs nothing. There are many more benefits of enlistment in our new technically trained Army. All young men between 17 and 34 should go to their local Army recruiting station today and find out about the opportunities for a career in the new regular army. Thank you, Randolph Scott, for appearing on this program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in. <laughs>